So recently, I've been experiencing a strange phenomenon that, admittedly, while is absolutely a first world problem, it's one that's been weighing on me all the same. And I may be alone in experiencing this phenomenon. If I am, I hope you enjoy the video anyways. That's why I'm making this. This kind of phenomenon is one of extreme gaming burnout, specifically caused by something called choice paralysis. Choice paralysis is something that I think the common human in America in particular experiences on a daily basis and is continuing to experience more and more through pretty much limitless options on where to eat, what to wear, what to watch, what to do. The amount of choices that we have to make on a given day are exponential and yet our time is so limited. And out of that comes choice paralysis. And how this has kind of recently manifested itself in my gaming life is in this. I've begun to recognize a pattern in how I approach playing games. This is kind of how it works for me. I'm, I'm getting really excited to start a new game or revisit an old game I haven't played in a while in this like lure of starting a new adventure. And then I start it and I'm enthralled in the game or the world and I can't put it down for uh, days or sometimes a whole week at a time. But eventually because of some outside circumstance, I have to not play for a day or two. And then when I do come back to the game and I'm still really excited and really wanting to play it, I sit down and I kind of remember all the other games that I started and stopped and I get overwhelmed, spend too long trying to decide and end up going back to a game that I've already finished. And I enjoy that for a little bit, but because it's a game I've already finished and I'm familiar with, I feel a bit unsatisfied and I'm like, ah, oh, I need something new. And then the cycle starts all over again. And to be honest, I'm not sure if this is just a me thing or not with, you know, having depression and just having that cause a uh, extreme lack of joy in something I found excitement in like the day before. But I do think it is a larger issue with gaming as a whole. This has been a trend for me personally for the last few years now, but over the last year or so, it's gotten infinitely worse for me as my free time has become more limited. So I've wanted to really be tactful in choosing what I play. But for a number of reasons, this almost always leads to this choice paralysis phenomenon and I end up spending more time debating what to actually play than actually playing anything. As I mentioned, this problem has grown for me in the last year because of my time, but also because of the kind of continued emphasis on this subscription services in the gaming sphere. I already had trouble deciding what to watch when we have the options of practically being able to watch anything with any subscription streaming service, so it's no surprise that this has now extended into my gaming life. Because as much as I love how Xbox Game Pass and PS Plus and like all these other subscription game services allow you to try new games for a fraction of the price with very little opportunity cost for us the consumers, I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling this choice paralysis even more now. So if you're not entirely sure what I'm meaning by all this, let me give you a recent example with my life. I've been loving and playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I sit down, I'm like, oh, let's play some more. And then I get a PS Plus or Game Pass notification, and I'm like, hmm, I could check out the Game Pass and see what's new. And oh yeah, that's right, I do have PS Plus right now, so I could probably and probably should make use of that time and pick up Bloodborne again while I can. Oh, but I'd have to restart it, it's been so long. And then in all this deliberation, I realize I've wasted an hour and I'm no closer to deciding what to play, so I just end up watching YouTube instead. And when that cycle repeats enough, you get gaming burnout. Where if you've experienced this, you love entertaining the idea of playing this new game you're enthralled in all day long while you're out doing work or whatever else it is, yet when you finally get home to your books and your armchair and your console of preference, the overwhelming choice paralysis sets in as you could play a million other games. And to be honest, I've just about had it trying to combat this. It is strangely exhausting to mentally work through all the possible things you could enjoy thinking of how fun they could be, only to not actually do any of them. So the question is, what can be done about this? And I don't exactly know, because as over this as I am, I unfortunately don't have a perfect answer. I'm not a psychologist and can't prescribe a burnout fix for anyone experiencing this or even myself. But what I can do and what I wanted to make this video for is to try and share my experience and to share what I've begun to try and do to combat this choice paralysis. So the very first thing I implemented that I actually I think saw on Reddit somewhere was to actually hiding all of my Steam games that I'm currently not playing because just looking at the backlog is often enough to make me have choice paralysis even if I'm not looking at all the games, looking at my little backlog section. I'm remembering all the games I could be playing. So for all the games that I am not currently playing, you can hide them on Steam. So that way when you open up Steam, 
all you see are the games that you have not hidden. Now you may be thinking, oh, won't I forget some games that I really want to play? I mean, maybe, but they're still in your library. You can still find them, and that might not be a bad thing if you forget them for a little bit, because then maybe you can focus on the ones you really want to play, which is the other part of this, prioritizing the ones you are playing. So I have a little currently playing tab in my Steam library that I now have only five games or six or something on. It depends on the day because I am also weird that I like to have a couple different games I am playing at the same time that are all different genres so I can like have a choice of like what to play depending on what mood I'm in but now I have a limited number of those installed more limited number and when I open up Steam that is the main thing I see and I just see those couple games now of course you can go back and look up other games that you have and like reinstall them and have I done that a couple of times just to like test specs on my Steam Deck maybe but that aside this has been a pretty helpful thing so far you know i've only done it about a week or two ago so time will tell on this one the next one i think that can save you both some time and money probably is unsubscribing from any subscription services you are not currently using or don't plan to use in the next month case in point game pass i've been like very sporadically playing persona 3 reloaded and i really like it and i now want to play the whole game eventually but i'm not currently actively playing it now i'm not really currently actively playing anything else on game pass so i don't need game pass right now and having that there having that accessible just makes this choice paralysis even worse so i've canceled game pass i do think i currently have ps now because i got it on the sale but i'm not even currently using that so i will probably just cancel that as well and just having those thoughts of games you could be playing eliminated from those platforms i think is really going to help me in the long run and of course i'll get those back when I want to play a specific game and I'm prioritizing that specific game and I'm not playing anything else at the time but for now I'm not doing that the next main thing I found kind of useful but you might not is kind of having set goals for each game and this is particularly for games that you are replaying for example I'm replaying Elden Ring and this being my second playthrough I'm familiar with the game I'm familiar with a lot of the mechanics all this so it's not necessarily all new however it's been a while since I played so some of it is new but I have a specific goal in mind in terms of the build and kind of feel I want this character to have so I have set goals of like I want to get this kind of weapon have this certain aspects for the builds all that so that's been helpful for me there and kind of staying in the world another thing is if you are wanting to 100% a game which for the most part I wouldn't recommend doing unless you're just absolutely in love with the game but that's a whole other video or just having set goals to get through the story of the game or to do certain side quests or to not do certain side quests if you find yourself drowning in side quests but just to focus on the story and get to that point and then see where you want to go those are just very simple goals that you can set for yourself depending on the game and the last point here is knowing when to set down a game if you're not having fun you have zero obligation to keep playing a game particularly if it's one you own because if you own it you can come back to it at any time obviously there's the whole thing of digital ownership and that's again all another video but if you're playing games that aren't on subscription services you will most likely be able to just come back and play it at any time and so if you're not vibing with the game or you find yourself really drawn to a different one you can drop it that's okay uninstall it put it on your steam hidden list and forget about it until you think about it way later and give it another go. I actually recently did this with Horizon Zero Dawn. I had it on Steam, I think I got it a year ago, tried it, didn't really vibe with it. I got back to it earlier this year and absolutely loved it and played through the whole story. And that was one I was pretty invested in for a while. That can be a totally viable thing because it took a year for me to get back to it. Same thing I'm trying to do with Sekiro, but we'll see how far that goes. This is my fifth time playing, by the way. And a little extra bonus point is gonna be streaming games. If that's the thing you really wanna do, stream games that kind of has like a not pressure but like you're live to potentially someone watching and i've had done that a couple times when i'm like oh, i really want to finish this part of a game but i kind of don't case in point some more frame missions i've just streamed it and kind of having that motivation there has helped me because for me i've been implementing most of these for a few weeks now and it has still been a struggle particularly because of me having to have different game genres for different moods that may still not help so I eventually i'm going to try and just whittle things down to one to three games at a time so wherever you find yourself on this range of choice paralysis and gaming burnout i hope this video helped you even just a little bit and i hope that you know maybe you can sit down and enjoy games gaming for hours and on in like you used to without getting distracted or bored or burnt out. And if this is something you've dealt with in the past and actually worked through it, please comment down below and let myself and others know what worked for you personally and hopefully that can help us and we can all kind of help each other with this gaming burnout and choice paralysis problem that yes is extremely first world 
but definitely is an issue that I don't think I'm alone in facing.